Starship is about to light up Starbase once again. NASA gets anxious and turns to a legend. Starlink and Dragon set records, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX continues to upgrade and reinforce Stage Zero at the Starship launch site in South Texas for their upcoming second launch attempt to orbit. Meanwhile, the fleet lineup continues to expand up Highway 4 at Starbase. All Series 20 ships are now stacked as of Tuesday with S-29 in the high bay. At the plate is 25, standing by for a possible static fire as early as Monday. Road closures are in place for that. For the past few weeks, we discussed NASA's enthusiasm for the program, specifically Starship HLS for Artemis. Will this week one of their own throttle back that enthusiasm a bit, according to an article by Space News? Associate Administrator Jim Free spoke at a joint meeting for the National Academy's Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board and Space Studies Board and said the agency is concerned Artemis 3, the first human landing on the moon for the program, was in danger of being pushed from 2025 to 2026. His reasoning? A lot of successful Starship launches are required before that mission can take off, like the orbital refueling demo and the uncrewed moon landing demo, which will require several tanker missions, ranging between 8 and 16 last I remember hearing. And let's not forget, a successful launch to orbit also needs to happen before any of that. Jim said he had met with the Federal Aviation Administration concerning this next launch attempt to orbit and reported back that the FAA is doing everything they can. Jim stated that he has made NASA's big picture of everything it's going to take to get to HLS perfectly clear to the FA. So it sounds like the space agency is putting some pressure on the Aviation Administration to cooperate. SpaceX and NASA have postponed a critical design review of HLS until the orbital refueling demo is complete, but Jim is confident the company will ultimately deliver. Speaking of all this, Apollo 16 astronaut Charlie Duke has been on the scene offering his help with NASA's Artemis lunar lander designs. Before SpaceX, I was a huge Apollo nerd and have much respect for Charles, especially since the man is still keeping it real for Jesus. You young whippersnapper heathens with your flood flags could definitely learn a thing or two from this man. By the way, well-deserved shout out to SpaceX for not partaking in this nonsense, at least not yet. Segwaying into Starlink news, the service did set an altitude and speed record for in-flight use during the Starship 24-7 test flight on 420, providing connectivity at over 120,000 feet while traveling at Mach 1.7. York Space Systems gave us the first peek at Starlink for the US Space Force, dubbed Starshield which is a military variation of the satellites. The top two payloads on the stack you see here are they. A flock of 22 second gen Starlink pigeons were taken to Earth orbit on Sunday morning, lifting off from Slick 40 Florida upon a thrice flown booster, which landed on just for the instructions bobbing on the Atlantic Ocean. And there's confirmation that the stage one landing bird has started in preparation for touchdown on our drone ship, just read the instructions. Stage two, turn for guidance. Stage one landing would deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Then on Monday, Cargo Dragon's 28th commercial resupply mission exploded off pad 39A on Florida's coast. Lift off of about 7,000 pounds of science and cargo, including a new pair of solar arrays to boost power on the space. The first stage booster flew for its fifth time and made an aesthetically pleasing touchdown on a shortfall of Gravitas floating on the same body of Wata. Dragon separated moments later and began its trip to the space station carrying 7,000 pounds of equipment, including new solar arrays you see in the trunk there. The following day, she rendezvoused and docked to the ISS, marking the 38th trip for the Dragon fleet and so beating the record previously set by the space shuttle for most visits to the station. Also with this mission, Dragon 2 fleet's commutative time in space surpasses Space Shuttle's fleet time with 1,324 total days in orbit. Epic TV is the sponsor for this video because as a science-based channel, I feel they have a featured documentary you should watch. The COVID-19 vaccines were approved beyond emergency use authorization years before any long-term studies could be conducted according to the FDA's own development standards. Now that the years are ticking by, more and more evidence is coming to light that these vaccines may not have been as safe and effective as we were once told. The Epic TV documentary is called The Unseen Crisis, Vaccine Stories You Were Never Told. It provides an intimate, uncensored look into the lives of those who live with the debilitating after effects of the COVID-19 vaccines. It examines the issue of COVID-19 vaccine injury claims in a fresh, honest, and comprehensive manner with expert interviews, whistleblower statements, and government health statistics. It's a documentary about people, not politics. It features patients who suffered severe reactions to the vaccines and describes their journey to get help through the public health system and pharmaceutical companies. 
I never knew that was going to be the last time I'd talk to my son. They know at a very intimate level what's going on with this. They know all of it. And yet, nobody's coming to the rescue of truth. The link to the documentary is shown here at the bottom of the screen, but I also put a link in the description below. The epic time slash unseen. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, the United Launch Alliance finally got around to conducting their very first static fire of its new Vulcan Centur rocket with twin BE-4 engines from Blue Origin. And I cannot stress, finally, enough. More than four years, finally. She was test fired at Launch Complex 41 at the Cape for a duration of six seconds, throttling up for two seconds before switching off. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, we have ignition. CEO Tori Bruno said all appeared nominal, so I guess we can expect a maiden flight later this year. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all who support the channel using one of the links below, and have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.